Charlie's been doing this job for years. He's a proud man, leaves the street clean as a whistle, and doesn't approve of shortcuts. He's heard of a new machine that's being tested in the area. He's not impressed. He's seen mechanical contraptions before now, driven by enthusiastic newcomers. But this machine claims to be small enough to get into every nook and cranny Charlie can, and powerful enough to do as good a cleaning job faster. That's a challenge Charlie can't turn down. So this is going to be a challenge thing. And no skimping, mine. Right. right. Come on. As the sun beats down out of the blue English sky, battle is joined. With its power cleaning system, the machine takes an early lead. But Charlie's not worried. He knows there are hurdles ahead he can negotiate. But for the machine, it could be a different story. This is one hurdle, a tight corner between two high walls full of litter collected by the wind. To the hand sweeper, no problem. Can the machine cope? One neat pass, and even Charlie couldn't complain about the results. Now, hurdle number two, the park bench. Armed with the unit's large diameter powerful vacuum tube, the machine demonstrates how it copes quickly with concentrated rubbish in places with limited access. And just to emphasize its lead, it takes in the waste paper basket as well. Well, I reckon I must be well ahead of Charlie by now, so I can afford to take a couple of seconds to have a look at this vehicle. Underneath this glass fibre body, there's a perfectly conventional 1600cc petrol-driven engine, which provides power to a pump, which provides the hydrostatic drive to this single central front wheel. Now, because there's no solid drive system, this wheel can be incredibly manoeuvrable. It'll turn through 200 degrees from lock to lock, giving this vehicle it's rather extreme maneuverability. The brush and vacuum system is interesting too. Underneath this skirt and plate system here, we can see how it operates. This is where the draft of air is created. It produces a pattern of air around here which draws the dust and rubbish in towards the revolving brushes. And because this skirt is mounted so, it is, in usual conditions, sufficient to prevent dust being raised by the brushes in the rubbish. However, in extreme conditions, there are a couple of water jets on either side to damp things down. Once it gets into this main hopper, the rubbish is well and truly soaked. Now, this prevents dust from clogging up the mechanics and the fan. In here, though, the rubbish settles out of the water, which then flows back to the vacuum nozzle to be used over and over and over again. This hopper will hold one and a half tons of rubbish. That's considerably more than Charlie's handcart. Charlie's handcart? Shall we call it on as even then? Thinks. Serves me right for talking so much. Trying to launch a product like this in Britain at a time when every local authority in the country is being forced to tighten its purse strings isn't going to be easy. But this little unit, which is being manufactured in an engineering works in Cambridgeshire, is finding favour where there is plenty of money available on the continent. Certainly, it seems capable of altering the most die-hard of British opinions, too. Yeah.